Hello, in this video I'm going to interpolate the temperatures from meteorological stations to a raster. But first we need to clean up some data. So I open the attribute table and toggle on the editing. And I see here some null values for the temperature which I need to remove before I do the interpolation. So with the control button pressed I selected those features and I use the bin to delete them. Next, I need to convert the temperatures to degrees Celsius because they need to be divided by 10. I use the field calculator to create a new field that I call TC. It's a decimal number. I only need uh, three positions and one decimal. Then from fields and values, I add the temperature underscore T 0.1 Celsius. I click on multiply and I type 0.1 and in the preview I can see that the result is what we want. When I click OK this is applied and the TC field now has the temperatures in degrees Celsius. Toggle off the editing and save the result. Note that the join is not saved in the layer but the derived data, the temperature Celsius, is saved. To demonstrate this I'm going to remove the table with the temperatures, the original one, and open the attribute table again. And here you see that now that uh, field has been uh, removed, the join is broken. But the TC that we calculated remains, and that's important. If we want to have kept all the fields, we should have exported um, the file before removing the table. Now let's do the interpolation, go to raster analysis and then choose grid nearest neighbor, which will result in so-called decent polygons. It simply assigns each location to the temperature of its nearest uh, meteorological station. So for the Z value, I choose the temperature field. And I choose an output file, which is a raster, so a geotiff in this case, and I call it tday and n from nearest neighbor. Let's run it. Here's the result. We can clearly see the decent polygons and I move the stations, the points on top. Let's now do the inverse distance weighing interpolation, which uses an exponential if I use the power of 2 here, the exponential decay function for the weights with distance from the station. Also here for the Z value I choose TC. And I save it to TDAY IDW. And then I run it. And here you see that the result is a smooth image. Let's do some styling first for the points. I use a simple marker, make the fill color black. And change the size. Add some labels, change it to single labels. And here we have the names of the uh, meteorological stations, but it would be nice to also have the uh, temperatures. So I go to the expression editor, as we did before, and we have the name field. I concatenate a new line, and I concatenate from fields and values, the temperature. But we also need a unit, so I concatenate this with a string. which has a space, because values and units need to be separated with a space. And for degrees I use the character function. And you can find character codes on the internet, but for degrees it is 0176. So here you see in the preview the degree symbol. I concatenate this and now I need to see from Celsius. So remember in single quotes I can add text. Double quotes are fields, single quotes are strings. And here we see the result. A 
let's change uh, the stations to title case because it was all in capitals and this looks much nicer. And we use center. Let's use a different font, Calibri, bold, and I add a white uh, text buffer, but actually that looks too prominent, so let's uh, change the opacity. Let's adjust the placement, choose a round point, and I change it to 2 millimeters. Now let's do some styling of the interpolated rasters. They are both continuous rasters, even the decent polygons. So we choose single band pseudo color. And I choose here the spectral ramp. But the spectral ramp uh, needs to be inverted in order to have red for warmer areas and blue for colder areas. Furthermore, I can change the blending mode to multiply to see the open street map layer in the background for orientation. Now let's do that also for IDW. Change it to single band pseudo color for continuous rasters. Invert the spectral color ramp. And for mode we try here quantile because it gives some nicer results. And we also use multiply to blend it with uh, the background of a street map. Never blend it with the nearest neighbor. So when you show it or make a screenshot for an assignment, always make sure that you have either IDW blended with OpenStreetMap or nearest neighbor blended with OpenStreetMap, but not the two interpolations blended with each other. So in this video, you've learned how to interpolate point data to rasters using the TSEN method or the inverse distance weighing.